Donkey Kong. Donkey Kong, the game we've played the most. You know this one. Donkey Kong is heaving barrels at you, and you'd better avoid them. So you've just got 80 Jump 1981 arcade game Donkey Kong. It's Donkey Kong. We know it. We've played it dozens of times. In this version, all you do is jump. You don't move at all. If you want to know exactly how many times we've played it, look at the uh, description of this game's video <laughs> for today's fact of the day. No, I, I, I'm, I'm doing a different sound of the day this time, actually. Oh, okay. You can look at- just go back in the playlist and see all of the different versions of Donkey yeah, Kong we've played. So versions can... of Donkey Kong. Anyway, and this, yeah, all you have to do is jump. Uh, level one, the barrels always go over to the, the far ladder on the right. On level two, uh, they alternate. Like, they might go down the, the first ladder, or they might go down the second ladder. Level three, they always go down that first close ladder. Which, honestly, kind of makes level two a little bit harder than level three, because it's a little more variable. So... I might be wrong about that, and level 3 might also be random. I don't know, sidebar will correct me if I'm wrong about that. Anyway, it's it's not killing you jump barrels. So... 9 Volt. Yeah. He's just some kid who likes Nintendo games. And he knows Wario from that. <laughs> and I would like to, to bring up the fact that... You know, when, when he interrupts himself and says that... He lives in Wario's city. Wario does not live in his city. He lives in Wario's city. So, there's some kind of... It might just be like fanboyish admiration that, oh, it's... He's the famous person living here, so it's his city. But it could be more like of a... a like real political power thing that Wario actually has some claim of ownership over the city. Or it could be like a mob boss mentality sort yeah. of thing. Yeah. That, uh, you, you don't want to say that this is someone else's city. It's Wario's city. And, uh, you don't want to be talking about it any other way if you value your life. But from the way that, well, F-Zero. Well, first of all, F-Zero! It's fast! It's wicked! It's your hyperspeed driving machine! Speed past the other racers! Vroom! Got left and right to move. F-Zero was a Super NES game in 1991. Pretty popular. Yeah, pretty popular. Very fast, high-speed, racy game. Here we've got, uh, you playing as Captain Falcon, who we've seen a couple of times through, uh, through Smash Brothers. And Best character, yeah. All you're doing is left and right, adjust your steering left and right. You want to avoid the different the other cars on the road and avoid the walls. Uh, the difficulty level increases the number of cars that are on the road. On level one, it starts at three, and you get one more each level from there. So on level three, there's five of them. So what else do we have to to consider? With how the hell did Wario meet Ninefold? Well, so, like, Nine Volt is clearly an eclectic little grade schooler. Yeah. Like, uh, and he knows a lot of cool tech stuff. Mm-hmm, mm -hmm. Um, like, his, his love of Nintendo video games is clear. Uh, he but has also... A, he, he also has a sentient Game Boy named sentient GB. Sentient Game Boy. He has a flying skateboard. Mm-hmm. And he loves to DJ. Yep. He's got a pretty uh, advanced DJ rig also. It's entirely likely they met through Jimmy at the club. Could be. Also, easily could just be that he approached Wario for like an autograph or something because he's a big fanboy. Also, very likely. And Wario saw, hey, this kid knows how to make games. Yeah. I am in the I am in the process of making games. Yeah. Make games for me! So, it's it's likely that this is a more recent meeting, more recent uh, acquaintance connection. That, or, uh, or maybe just, like, became aware of him and it was later on that once he start realized he's gonna start making games, he calls up this kid and is like, Hey, you wanna make games with me? 
Yeah. You know video games. You you know how all the video the, games the go. The friendship may be one directional. Yeah, it's almost certainly. So, uh... Yeah, like I said, Ninevolt himself doesn't seem to be that complicated a character. I mean, he is a kid. Yeah. So, there's probably not going to be too terribly much to talk about with him. Um, well, we've got another game coming up. Yeah. We've got... Family Basic. That's not a game. Locate and press the correct key. All this fun in 18 tiny bits. You've got four directional move, A to push the button. So in 1984, NES keyboard allowing players to program in basic Japan only. So, the on the Famicom, uh, well, first of all, the game itself. You've got a keyboard here. It gives you an instruction for what key to press. And much like the page-turning one back with uh, Mona's games, it keeps that on screen so you know what one you need to press. You don't need to, like, remember it. Uh, you've got the whole keyboard. On level 1, it's just the numbers row at the top. It's always going to be just a number. On level 2, it's just the letters. Mm -hmm. And then on level 3, it's the full keyboard, both letters and numbers. Uh, and you always start on H, and it'll pick a random thing, so sometimes you have to rush to the far end of the keyboard, away from the center. Or on level one, it starts on six, because you only have the numbers. But, uh, yeah, so that's, that's, that's the mini, the micro game. Yeah. Family Basic, yeah, uh, in 1984, there was a, a Nintendo released a Famicom cartridge, um, made by both Nintendo and Hudson Soft, with... Family Basic. Um, it's it's programming a programming basic. Huh? Yeah, you can. It's it's a modified version of the basic programming language that uh, you could make your own games with in the, the Famicom. It's got the it games with the the keyboard that you plug into your your Famicom console. It had a storage writing device also there was a, a, a data writing peripheral that would you could save the games that you've written to cassette tapes <laughs> so yeah you know, okay. magnetic tape data storage yeah because that's that was what uh it's what's around that's what pcs used at the time yeah. like we saw back at the the start a couple of those versions of donkey kong that we played were on pcs that used magnetic tape for yep. their uh their game packs gotta spool those up yeah so, uh, this, that's honestly pretty wild. Just in 1984, a home console peripheral that was released that you could use to program your own games. Well, 